Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. This meeting is one day later than usual because of the U.S. holiday that happened yesterday. I'm Dan and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at U.S. Uh, Eastern Time, 2 p.m., 11 a.m. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with this holiday, as I just mentioned. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So I mentioned the notes doc. There is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can, contrib can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can, use, you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the meeting uh, of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. Uh, we'll go through each part as we get to them. And now I'll start with the uh, first section, which is uh, community news. And I will take a timestamp here. Um, so this, uh, it, these, these news items come for the circuit, from the Python, weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. I'll tell you more about that at the end. First of all, uh, what's new in Raspberry Pi Pico 2? In the latest issue of the Magpie magazine, Raspberry Pi CTO James Adams provides a closer look at what's new in Raspberry Pi Pico 2. And there's a link to that interview uh, in the notes document. Um, uh, there's a, a developing news item. The community discusses RP2350 pin latching issues. The maker community continues to characterize a hardware issue with currently released RP2350 A2 stepping chips. The issue was initially characterized as a problem that could occur if a pin is set as an input with the internal pull-down resistor enabled. If the pin is brought externally to 3.3 volts and then the 3.3 volts is removed, the pin output becomes latched at slightly over 2 volts instead of being at ground. Um, Raspberry Pi issued Erratum RP2350E9, that's in the data sheet, and there's a link to that in the notes document, which discusses this issue and describes a workaround for reading the pin value. But later reports by Adafruit, that's me in this case, dangerous prototypes, Pimeroni and others, have shown that enabling the internal pull-down resistor does not seem to be required to trigger the two-volt latch-up. So in other words, the problem is, seems to be uh, more pervasive than uh, what we see uh, in the erratum. Observation also shows, also shows that externally grounding the pin with sufficient current clears the latch state. Raspberry Pi and the community are actively investigating this evolving issue, so please refer to the latest developments if the issue affects your designs. So there's, uh, you can look at, there's a, uh, an issue in the Raspberry Pi Pico feedback repo. That's issue 401. There's a link for that. That's an issue that I filed summarizing my own testing and pointing to some other testing. And also you can read um, several relevant topics that are in the Raspberry Pi forum. There's a link to that, uh, which will find you all the documents that, me uh, that mention the erratum, which is basically how you can find these uh, discussions. So this is still going on. Uh, I filed this issue 
uh, about a week ago, a little more than a week ago, and uh, Raspberry Pi says they're working on it. It's obviously uh, an important thing for them to address and explain and so forth. And it already has sort of partly been explained, but we're trying to figure out what the best workarounds for this are. All right, uh, moving on. I'll take a timestamp, which I should have done before. Um, CircuitPython 913 was released. I released that last week. It's a bug fix release. It's a stable release. Um, it has some basically mostly board specific stuff. It fixes a UART creation on the ESP32C6. It fixes display tearing on the Qualia, Adafruit Qualia board. And it also fixes uh, some pin initialization issues on Adafruit Feather C6. And also now, um, uh, we now publish um, builds, merged PR builds for other than the main branch. We, we also pu now publish them on AWS S3. That is absolute newest for uh, stable releases like 9.1.x. That branch is, has, its releases are now uh, available on AWS. So you can find them easily and test uh, any PRs that have been done to uh, other than main. Okie dokie. Next news item. Um, uh, is it time to update the open hardware definition for AI or make a parallel one for AI? Uh, so this is uh, some remarks from Phil uh, Taroni from uh, Adafruit. It might be time to update the open hardware definition. It's over 10 years old. A lot has changed in the last 10 plus years for open source hardware and open source software, and some things have not. There was is an open source hardware definition 1.1 draft, but it has not been updated in the wiki since December 10th, 2018. So this is all about adding uh, stuff about using AI in when you're designing open hardware. And I won't read the uh, detailed suggestions that Phil has, but feel free to look at the link and read about this and see if you have any comments or, or interest in this. It's, it's, it is it's a question about how do you, you know, how might you indicate, for instance, that you used AI to help build a design and what does that mean from the open source point of view and how should that be documented and so forth. And this is what that is discussing. All right, so all these, these news items came from our Python and Microcontrollers weekly newsletter uh, that's published um, by Adafruit uh, edited by Ann uh, uh, every week. It's great. Um, it's a community newsletter. The archives are at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, it highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. We'd love to have your contributions to this newsletter. Uh, you can email cpnews at adafruit.com or on various social media, you can tag posts with hashtag CircuitPython or you can make a pull request to the newsletter drafts, which are kept in public GitHub. And all those links are in the notes document. Okay, so now we'll move on to um, the next major section, which is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the CircuitPython core, the CircuitPython libraries, and Blinka. So first of all, overall, in the past week, uh, there were 18 pull requests merged by eight authors. Um, a new author I see is E.G.J. E. Morrington. Thank you very much. And there were three reviewers. There were 13 issues closed by eight people and 11 opened by nine people. And uh, Scott, would you like to read the core section? Sure, I'm happy to. Let me just find it here. Okay, so for the core, we had 14 pull requests merged uh, from seven different authors, some infrequent folks, Andy Bing, uh, Babalok B. Elpikininen, uh, thanks to those infrequent folks. Uh, we had three reviewers, myself, Dan, and Jeff. Uh, we had 24 pull requests, so we're right uh, about at the limit of the one-page goal uh, that I kind of informally have, uh, which is how many pull requests show up on a page, which is 25. 
Uh, issues wise, we had nine closed issues by four people and, and nine open by seven people, so we're net even uh, with you know single digit folks involved. Uh, we have seven hundred seven hundred and thirty seven open issues. Uh, we have eight active milestones. The ones of most interest uh, to eight different funded folks are nine two zero and nine one X. There are thirteen nine one X and two nine two zero. These are the ones that we'd like to get uh, kind of figured out by the nine two stable release although a lot of the fixes are going in 9.1x as well. Uh, one issue not assigned a milestone, so we do have a little triage to do, but it uh, should be good to go, and I think we're keeping up to date. So that's where we are with the core. All right, thank you, Scott. All right, next up is libraries and Foley Guy. Are you available for that? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries, all of which are found on GitHub under names like Adafruit, uh, underscore circuit python underscore and then the name of whatever library it is these tend to be either driver libraries to help you interface with some piece of hardware or helper libraries to help you achieve some uh, project without worrying as about as many of the minute details across all those libraries in the past seven days uh, or actually uh, i did go back and pull one from yesterday as well so uh, actually from the past eight days uh, on this chunk of the stats we had five pull requests merged uh, it says two authors because I added the extra author and didn't update the number. So there are actually three authors. The names that were new uh, to me, uh, so these folks, again, might be newer or less frequent contributors. Uh, I think echoing Dan mentioned before, EJG Morrington, uh, thanks to them, added a library in the community bundle. And uh, Utsinger was the other name uh, who added a uh, PR in one of the libraries. So thanks to those folks. Uh, we had two reviewers. Thanks to Scott and Dan for doing some reviews in libraries. Um, of the five pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was getting up there at 382 days. The newest uh, couple were down at one and two days. That leaves us after the week with 42 open pull requests. The oldest one there is a draft that's at 747 days. Uh, the newest one is at four days. Um, over the past week, we had three issues closed by three people with two new issues opened up by two people. That leaves us currently with 880 open issues, and 103 of those are labeled as good first issues, uh, which you could find over on circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website you should head to if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython project, uh, particularly in contributing to the source code. Um, you can head over to that page. What you'll find is a list of open PRs and open issues. Usually we direct uh, folks who are new and wanting to get involved to the open PRs first. You can take a look through the list, find something that uh, either catches your eye that you have an interest in that particular library or that you've got the hardware for and you think you know how to test, uh, go ahead and click through to GitHub and find the, the PR and the branch of code that comes with it and pull it down. Um, if you do have the device, go ahead and give it a try. Uh, if you don't, just look over the code if you'd like to do that uh, for syntax and spelling, uh, comments, anything like that. Uh, leave a comment on GitHub. Let us know that you took a look and what you found. If you tried it out, let us know how it went. Uh, if you do that a couple of times and get comfortable with it and want to get uh, leveled up to leave official reviews, we can help you uh, along the road to doing that as well. Uh, when you feel ready, if you'd like, you can click over to the open issues uh, on that same page, circuitpython.org slash contributing. That is a very similar list of open issues that are on GitHub. So these don't have changes submitted yet, but they are looking for someone who wants to work on a change. So if you'd like to start getting your hands dirty with some code, that's a great list to look through. And again, find something either that you have an interest in uh, or that you've got the hardware you feel like you can test. Um, and click through to GitHub again, find what the issue is, whether it's adding a new feature or fixing a bug or whatever. Um, go ahead and make those changes, whatever that issue is calling for, and submit a PR with it. And then um, so you can uh, get it reviewed and kind of that's the process of getting code into these libraries. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, um, that's the page where you should head. Uh, one more time, circuitpython.org slash contributing. If you feel like you need help with any of that, um, we do have a guide on the Learn Guide system that can help you uh, contribute to our project and realistically any others uh, using Git and GitHub. If you are interested in specifically our project, we also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord. So join us in the CircuitPython Dev or the Help with CircuitPython channel. Uh, and if you're trying to get involved with contributing uh, but having trouble, there's going to be folks in there who are willing to help you out. Just come say hi, let us know what you're doing, uh, what you need help with. We'd be happy to help. Uh, in terms of the library uh, PyPI weekly download stats this week, we had 191,103 uh, PyPI downloads across the 333 libraries. And then uh, new libraries this week, both over in the community, uh, bundled the CircuitPython button handler and CircuitPython rotary select. Um, 
that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Romy Guy. Okay. Um, next, we've got Blinka. And um, because Melissa is out this week, uh, Scott volunteered to read the Blinka section. All right. Thanks, Dan. So Blinka is the compatibility layer for using CircuitPython libraries on top of single board computers and MicroPython. Um, so in the last week, there were no pull requests merged. Um, there are currently five open pull requests, uh, a number of those uh, across the different Blinker repos. Uh, we had one closed issue by one person and zero open by zero people, so still net down one for a total of 103 open issues. Uh, because this is uh, often used in CPython, we have some download numbers as well. So uh, PyPI downloads in the last week was 19,682, and PyWheels downloads in the last month was 16,355. Uh, and currently Blinka supports 146 boards, um, and most of those are single board computers, like the NVIDIA stuff. <laughs> and that's it for Blinka. All right. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Next up, we have our major section, Hug Reports. And I'll take a timestamp for that. Um, so Hug Reports, it's a place where we can highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I will start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. So first of all, I'll say um, uh, thanks to Dangerous Prototypes, that's Ian, and Gadgetoid, that's Phil Howard, and others for helping to characterize the RP2350 latching input issue. Uh, Ian is from... Um, uh, Bus Pirate and uh, Gazetoid is from Pi Moroni. We've all been working together to try to figure out what's going on here. So thanks to Jeff for jumping right back in with bug fixes after he's, he's back from his Marvel's vacation. And thanks to Sam Blenny and Retired Wizard for um, issue reports and PRs recently. We appreciate it. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, let me get scrolled here. So thanks, uh, hard reports for me this week. Thanks to Thatch for fixing an issue that I observed in the Itsy Bitsy Internet 52840 uh, bootloader specifically a while ago and following up recently on GitHub to check in and see if the latest versions had resolved that. And then uh, a group hug for everybody. Thanks. All right. Thanks. And next up is Jeff. Hi there. Um, I have a group hug, but also hugs for everybody working on bugs blocking 9.2, especially anecdata retired wizard Dan and Scott. All right, thank you. And uh, finally, we've got Scott today. It's a very small list this week. Mm -hmm. Small but mighty. Yeah. Um, okay, first, uh, thanks to Ashley Wetter for quickly fixing the auto API issue that broke Circuit Python. This is uh, the Read the Docs build. Uh, Hug reports play duck for updating the ESP32 camera library for the new I2C API. Uh, there's a pending pull request there that hopefully they'll get in. Uh, Hug reports tack for the quick review of the ESP sleep resume fix uh, for your USB. Um, that I just made a PR to get that into circuit by them proper. Uh, hug report to Cooper Dalrymple for making the WM8960 driver much more featureful. That's just about uh, that's PR. That's just about the land. And then lastly, to EJ, uh, EGJ Morrington again, uh, they made some small doc fixes, which are super helpful. Okay, thank you, Scott. All right, <clears throat> our next major section is status updates. Um, this is where uh, we get to tell folks what we're up to individually. So I'll start and we'll go through the list as before. When I call on you, you can take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. Um, if a discussion becomes too long for status updates, like there's some interesting stuff going on, we can move it, uh, that part of the discussion to in the weeds. All right, so take a timestamp for myself. If I can use the caps key properly. All right, uh, so I, as mentioned, I released CircuitPython 913 uh, last week. That's to publish some Feather C6 and quality of fixes and get them into the official release. Um, and I've been tracking this RP23 latching, RP2350 latching problem. 
as I mentioned, uh, we haven't heard from Raspberry Pi yet, but they say they hope to say something soon. But we'll wait for the real thing. It's not worth speculating right now, really. Um, and otherwise, I've done a lot of PR reviews and I've researched various uh, issues that might or might not be issues that were reported in issues or in Discord and other places like that. And I'm also going to be working, I'm continuing to work on the um, uh, the MicroPython version 1.23 merge. I forgot to put that in the list here. So, do it right, right away. Okay, and next up, uh, we've got Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Stan. Um, this past week, I started working on implementing the, uh, a serial plotter inside the web IDE, um, similar to the one in Mu. And I, from what I understand, I think it's in the Arduino and a couple other um, IDEs potentially as well. Um, and that's going pretty well, actually going better than I thought it might, quicker than I thought it might. So that's nice. Um, it's getting close to be uh, ready to move the PR for it out of draft. Just have to do a couple last bits of cleanup and make sure um, everything's working as intended. But I'm um, looking forward to being able to use that in the future. Um, the other main thing that I've been uh, working on in the relatively short week is refactoring some uh, vector IO intersection functions that I wrote a few weeks ago. Uh, I had submitted these in a, a PR, um, but I am going back and refactoring them now from, uh, they used to be class functions on the, the circle and rectangle objects, and the newly refactored ones are just module functions that accept numbers instead. Um, which makes it easier to use with other kinds of, of objects, but also removes a couple of chunks of code that was essentially duplicated um, based on the way it was written before. Uh, and then I also am slowly adding up a couple other uh, functions into it. The newest ones are uh, circle and rectangle contains point uh, test, which are going to become necessary for the polygon intersection functions if I make it far enough uh, to implement those ones. Um, but that's what I've been up to. Thanks. All right, thanks, Tim. Okay, and Jeff is up next. Hi again. So um, I've been trying to pick up some bugs blocking 9.2.0, but the list is actually really short, which is exciting. Um, last week, I did create a small reproducer script for a crashing bug on ESP32-S3, um, but that still took uh, in excess of an hour sometimes to reproduce the crash, so I wasn't able to go further and isolate the real cause. Uh, frustratingly, it sort of looks like the crash is inside of the socket API LWIP accept, which is part of ESPI EDF, which would not be fun to debug. Um, and that's, that's as far as I got, so I kind of gave that back. Um, I'll be working tomorrow and Thursday, but then I am heading Friday to the Chicago area for the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. Uh, it's a free to attend event and I'm excited to do a road trip with a friend and maybe I'll bring back some, some photos or tell a little something about that. And if anybody is in the Chicago area, uh, you can hit me up on Discord, just at me on the CircuitPython, um, on, the, on the Adafruit Discord and we might uh, get together and meet there at the Vintage Computer Festival. That would be cool. Uh, but that's what's up with me, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. That sounds great, and we'll see what comes back in the car, too. Uh, and finally, we've got Scott. Hello. Um, okay, so I debugged a problem where the serial connection from an ESP, the USB serial connection was not coming back after resuming from sleep. Turns out uh, it was a pretty easy fix in upstream tiny USB. So it's been merged upstream, and I have a pull request out to update uh, CircuitPython to that uh, later version. Uh, basically, we there was interrupt code that handled the resuming, but it was never enabled. <laughs> uh, so I enabled it, and then it worked, which was great. Um, uh, we Our read the docs build also got broken at the end of the last week. This is due to an auto API version uh, release that broke our stuff, and they looked at it over the weekend or at the end of last week and fixed it for us. So um, I'm unpinning it now, and it should be working again. Um, I updated the PIO USB submodule just to fix some buffer overflow issues that may impact PIO USB host. So hopefully that's going to be working better for folks too. I bumped the flash and PSRAM speed on the Qualia back up to 120 megahertz to reduce tearing. Um, with the five 
one update, it was reduced down to 80 uh, because PS RAM is actually not super stable or not is not stable, fully stable at 120 megahertz. Um, the IDF has a comment about like if the temperature of the chip changes more than 20 degrees Celsius, it will just return garbage. So heads up, <laughs> if you have crashes on Qualia, that's probably what it is. But in the meantime, if your temperature is stable, your displays will have a lot less tearing than they did before. Tearing is basically a ca caused by the uh, display output not being able to keep up. Um, like the PS RAM is not being able to keep up with the pixels that we need to refresh to refresh the display. Next up for me uh, is another big bug on my list, which is the that BLE HID doesn't fully work on the Espresso. Um, it doesn't fully connect on devices, including iOS. So I've got to uh, reopen my my BLE brain and figure out what's missing um, so that we can get full pairing and stuff working. And uh, but because lots of people want BLE HID, so we'll get that get that polished up. Uh, so that's on my radar. All right, thank you, Scott. And thanks for working all that stuff, all that stuff. So we've got nothing for in the weeds. So we'll just uh, wrap up this short meeting. Um, so I'll just remind everybody: the next meeting is next Monday, um, September 9th at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, and 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. And uh, we'll see you then, and maybe we'll have more people here because it'll be the regular time and not right after a U.S. holiday. All right. Thanks, everybody, and I'll stop recording. Bye-bye.